Welcome back, everybody, to Grand Tactician, the Civil War. It's May of 1862. We are watching our Western Army as it makes the move towards St. Louis and a possible removal of the Union from Missouri. Of course, we're going to have to defeat the Army of Indiana again, which is there. But if we move to St. Louis, I'm sure he'll come for us. Uh, and then a defeat there would probably get Missouri into the Confederacy. Uh, watching the Army of the Mississippi here, waiting for the opportunity to be able to move across the river and into southern Illinois with Nathan Bedford Forrest in that army. Uh, the Army of Tennessee. Actually, this should probably be to be consistent with uh, Confederate naming patterns for armies. Uh, army of the Mississippi is a Union kind of thing. Naming after rivers. So this really should be the Army of Mississippi. I don't know why it's saying Mississippi Squadron right now, but let's go ahead and fix that. Okay, here goes the move for St. Louis. We've got it. Another city falls, Confederates victorious, Union citizens in dismay. Southern morale is boosted, President Davis ecstatic. And with that, we grab the St. Louis Armory which is a much needed base of supply, though I, I will say we're still gonna need more. That only supplies 19,000 men, so uh, I think we'll build at least one more here. And then we're just gonna kinda sit tight. I think we might actually build a build a fort there in St. Louis. What about Stewart's squadron? How, how many guns do they have? Disa uh, one ship disabled two guns. All right, piece of cake. Let's send Jones's squadron up there to deal with that. Should be pretty easy. We've got a couple of gunboats there. The Tennessee and the Arkansas ought to be able to handle them. Whoa, what? Why did our unit disintegrate? They should have had no trouble with that. Looks like Cairo's about to fall. Um, let's get Forrest over there and deal with that. All right, send the Mississippi Squadron, 42 guns. I don't understand that at all. We shouldn't have had any trouble with Stuart Squadron with two guns. Confederacy introduces free trade. Let's go back to policies now. That's going to help a little bit with British intervention, which is still remarkably low right now. I really don't have anything else I want to choose right now. I wouldn't mind getting Diplomacy 3 which will unlock some new weapons, but that'll require us to invest in another policy. All right, yep, let's go for Diplomacy 3. Although we also have the possibility of Industrialization 3. Um, government funding 2 would be good as well, but I'm gonna go Diplomacy. 39 days on that one. All right, come on, Mississippi Squadron. The Department of the West is headed toward this, um, toward Mississippi, or the Army of uh, the West. All right, good. Took care of Stuart Squadron, our Western Army under D.H. Hill. 38th Congress to be chosen. We'd very much like to see the Democrats win that. For the sake of the Confederacy, Department of the West, 18,000 strong coming this way. Army of Indiana's got 10,000. I feel like D.H. Hill, even if they those two combine, we can take them. But we drove them off from coming at Cairo. However, I do want to get back over here. You know what? What I really ought to do is form another, like a small cavalry force that can be a quick reaction force for things like this so we can grab these supplies, for example. So let's go ahead and form something like that. Recruit a new army in Tennessee. Yeah, Sterling Price is not gonna be the guy for that. Let's see if we've got any decent, is that Mahone? There's a Vander Law, no. Bowen, ah, uh, 
Not a lot of great options, really. Edward Porter Alexander, no. Robert Rhodes. Basically, none of these guys are any good to start. All right. That'll work. So let's just recruit some Cav. Just a three brigade cavalry force to start. There it is, Missouri secedes, a new state in the Confederacy. Union Midwest threatened, Confederate armies triumphant. So let's look at the situation now with that. National morale for the Union down to 90, but national support still at 80. Morale of the armies is pretty low. You can see we have a lot more men fielded than he does. And I'm not real crazy about that just from a uh, fairness standpoint. That really is not something that ever would have happened. But Lincoln just issued the Emancipation Proclamation. That's obviously going to hurt our British intervention number. It's going to be interesting to see how that impacts things. Okay, here we've got... Oh, boy. No sooner had we won a victory in terms of getting Missouri on our side than two armies, the Department of the West, 16,000 strong, and the 43rd Army, 25,000 strong. We're going to hit D.H. Hill, who only has a little over half that amount. We are sending the Army of Mississippi to help out, but they're just not going to get there in time, so we're going to have to fight this. All right, we're going to have to be on the attack, which I still don't quite understand how they determine these things since my army was the one sitting there and he came at me. It seems like I would be on the defense in this situation, but um, we're going to be outnumbered and have to go on the attack. We're going to have to go after some of these objectives. You can see there's a bay here, Carver's Bay, Spencer's Bay. There's some waterways. I would imagine he's going to be down in this area somewhere so I guess we'll kind of move up here and then we'll just advance slowly and see what happens okay we started issuing orders and boom there he is he's actually right here we got a glimpse of him for a second so um, I've got to cancel all of my orders because we are not going to get nearly that far in fact we may be better off to wait until nightfall and then try to figure out an alternate strategy because he's built up his defensive position right there and that's going to be a tough one to crack. Uh, so we're going to issue some some halt orders and then redo these orders. Well, everybody got the order except for Debray, the Rangers volunteers who kept on moving and they've run headlong into the Union fortifications and they're very quickly just going to get annihilated. As you can see, already nearly 200 losses. Ugh, they're going to break. They're going to break. That was brutal. All right, everybody else has got the order. We're going to start spreading out, try to get out on his flanks, and then uh, give nightfall for us to figure out what in the heck to do about this situation because this is not, not a good one for me. Okay, we've reached the end of the day, which means it's always possible he might redeploy here. But we're definitely going to shift everybody over to this side. We're going to put everybody in three lines. Let's get our cav on either side. And then we'll kind of figure out what to do. Oh, is Meade in charge of a battery in this army? Interesting. Okay, let's bring Hood right up here, the Western Legion. Stafford's division will come up right here. I'm going to send Lane out into these woods. I want to see what's up. And then we're going to bring Holmes up from behind. We've got a nice open field right here. We can come at his flank without having to attack these parapets. Maybe if we can push him back a little bit, we can line up along this fence. Okay, he's redeploying, except he's holding his guns there. I 
We'll get our Arkansas State batteries going. They've got three inch ordnance, so they'll be able to do some counter battery fire. We'll send out some skirmishers to go after Meade. We should be able to drive this battery off. I might even send debris up into these woods and then charge them out there if there's nobody supporting that battery. I'm going to keep Holmes' division as a reserve, but I'm going to keep them close. All right, right now it's just about driving off this battery. Come on, three inch guns, do your job. Oh yeah, we're driving them off. Nice. Grab those guns, if we can. Okay, so as hoped, we're going to be able to move right up to this fence. I'll have to dismount the Yuma Mounted Raiders. Where are those objectives? One's there, one's there. So we're not anywhere close to those. Okay, we see the position he's in. We'll probably force him to make a change if we move up much further. And that's kind of the goal here. So let's go ahead and start making that move. I'm actually going to Holmes has a bigger bigger division, so I'm going to actually jump them ahead now. Leave Stafford where he is. These are only six pounders. we got to fix that. Get some bigger weapons there. Got 24 pounder howitzers here. Boy, those could probably really wreak some havoc. The El Paso Heavy Artillery. All right, we're moving in this position here. We're going to get the Yuma Mounted Raiders right into this spot. Get them dismounted. And they're going to plug right into this corner of the fence. And we're going to force this guy to dislodge from his parapets. We did capture at least a couple of these guns. What are they? 12 pound Napoleons. All right, and these 24 pounder howitzers are gonna be nice up here. We'll start pouring it into the rear of this guy and he's gonna have to turn around and deal with this. And then I think we'll just sit tight for a while force him to respond. Remember, he's got a lot more men than I do, so I don't think we're seeing all of them yet. He's got 49,000 men. Alright, Debray. Yeah, actually, I think we're better off if he sits tight and lets the infantry move ahead of him. Okay, we got 24 pounder howitzers, we got the Bobcat Brigade, and the 42nd Black Watch. They're gonna pour fire into this guy and force him out of that parapet. I don't know why he's not moving.
There he goes. Alright, we've got to deal with this battery now. Once we drive these guys off. Send out some skirmishers. Send Tucson Rangers and the Santa Fe Regulars forward. Santa Fe Regulars could hit elite status in this battle. All right, Debray, are you mounted? Get mounted. probably going to cost, but we're going to send Debray in to try and deal with this battery. Rangers Volunteers doing all the dirty work today. Alright, let's slow things down and go. Oh, there's another battery there. Oh, boy. Oh, it's just a detachment. All right, Debray, do your thing. Take these guys out. Oh, he's sending an infantry brigade in. As long as we deal with the battery, it's okay if the infantry drives us off then. Yeah, it looks like they did their job. Took out the guns, that's all that matters. Good job, Debray. They're panicked, but that's understandable. They did their jobs. All right, let's put these six pounders out here somewhere where they can do something. I still got to keep an eye out. I know he's got more men somewhere, and I just don't know where they are. Unless they're backed up up here somewhere. Okay, so right now we're dealing with Zook. He's about the only Union Brigade that's making contact with us at the moment. So let's get the Bobcat Brigade, 42nd Black Watch up here. Try to deal with them. I want to move Pierce up. No, not the guns. Leave the guns where they are. Move these Arkansas State Troops up. This could be dangerous here because Santa Fe Regulars are going to get in contact with a bunch of brigades that may come back to haunt us, but I gotta deal with these guns here. Send forward some skirmishers. Oh, they don't have any guns. That's what's left of that of Meade's battery. All right, I knew there was more, and they're right here, okay. So what we need to do now is just keep an eye on these guys. We'll allow Lane to do that, but he's obviously trying to bring them down to, and if, if they come in and hit my flank, that could be trouble. So I'm sending Stafford's division over that way. So we'll have some additional troops over there. But it looks like we're a long way off from being able to win this thing. I don't know if this is going to be a winnable battle for us. You need to go long range, Santa Fe regulars. Bring in the skirmishers. Wow, what is Zook doing? Except committing suicide. All right. Oh, Zook. I mean, not that I'm complaining. 
He's probably not going to march through this swamp. I would imagine he's going to come down this road and try to hit me here. I would very much like you to not use the roads to do this, Stafford. Go straight across, please. How are we doing, Bonham? So far, so good. They're actually... Oh, they are firing. Okay. Who's taking casualties? Macintosh. All his detachment. Alright, he's got a perk available. We'll go deadly volley. Oh yeah, this is going to be a problem over here. How is Zook holding on as long as he is? That's impressive. Santa Fe regular is getting super close to that elite status. Any second now, actually. Inflicting two to one casualties, but I'm afraid that's not going to be enough. Come on, Stafford, get over there. Pierce has Springfield muskets, they just don't have the range. Neither of these guys. Let's send out some skirmishers. Become elite. All right, we've got it. Our first elite unit, the Santa Fe Regulars. I like that flag. Let's go with that. Let's get a look at their elite status flag now. If we can see it from here. There it is. Awesome. I love that. What I don't love is our situation here. Come on, Stafford, get over there. Zook finally broke. got to try and win the battle over here before this happens. Oh, they're pulling back. What? Okay. Not going to complain about that. The problem here is Arkansas State Troops don't have the range to really be able to engage over here. I'm trying to bring the Black Watch up and over. Here's the situation. He's still got 43,000 men to my 25,000. Casualty rate's pretty even in terms of percentages. We've evened out the number of guns, but uh, we're just not inflicting the casualties fast enough. I'm trying to get 
at him over here. I need you out there on this side. I need as many guns firing on him as possible. These Arkansas State troops are about to break. I'll give them iron discipline, but it may be too late. They're gonna they're gonna fall back. They've lost a thousand men. They're just getting hammered. I know he is. Alright, let's get these 24 pounder howitzers up here. Uh, switch to a minor defeat after that unit broke. Oh, percentage is much higher on my side. This is bad. Oh, I don't want to lose St. Louis. I just took it. All right, it's time to get aggressive. We're gonna charge in with these two units here. We can break his line. A desperate charge. Oh no! It may be working. How far we can push this desperate charge is another question. Tucson Rangers have barely taken any casualties, so let's send them in. Uh, Cooper, he's just kind of chilling back here. Let's get them mounted up and into the action. Yuma Mounted Ra Raiders, go! I'm going to try to overwhelm this Union line. Seems like it worked. Whether that's enough to win the battle is another question. Nice, we disintegrated one of them. Okay, okay, look at that morale. It's down low now. Hit him again. Let's try to push this. There's the human mounted raiders. All right, we just had one of ours break now. Nice. Beautiful. Here goes another enemy unit. Whipped, wiped out. Now, enemy casualties, 10,000. Of course, that's a misleading stat just because we dissolved some units that'll probably reform at some point. Hit those guns. There goes another one. Or is that the same one? That might be the same one. Ah, oh, beautiful. A well-timed charge can be everything in this game. What was starting to look like a possibility of a loss might be pulling victory from the jaws of defeat. Might come down to Colquitt and whether or not he can take out this battery. Heavy casualties, but it may have been worth it. All right, Colquitt couldn't finish them. Let's see if we can send McCulloch in to do it. McCulloch's Brigade. Which is under Macintosh. Macintosh. 
All right, I think we got this. Wow, that was crazy. Yeah, I think we snatched victory from the jaws of defeat right there. That was cool. I'm happy with that. All right, there we go. So that was a huge win over Dixon Miles. D.H. Hill should be very proud of that one. We hold on to St. Louis and Missouri for the Confederacy. And now we can send some reinforcements over that direction to help out. Now we've got to start focusing on what's happening out east because things have been a real standstill over there. And I'd like to get that moving, I'd like to get those uh, units of the Army of Northern Virginia more involved as much as possible. So we'll take a look at the situation there and see what we can do to push them out of the Shenandoah Valley. All right, we're going to move Joe Johnston with the 1st Corps over toward the Army of the Chesapeake. That's the only force that's holding Washington, D.C. right now. The 2nd and 3rd Corps continue to be in the Shenandoah Valley. We've got to get their supply situation upgraded. They don't have nearly enough supply right now. You can see British intervention is down to 8% now that Lincoln passed the Emancipation Proclamation. That's basically just, there's no chance of British intervention now that he did that. Okay. So Lee, um, with about 27,000 men, is going to go up against the Army of the Chesapeake with 33,000. We'll see how this goes. Battle of Aqueduct Bridge, Virginia, which could open the door to Washington. Okay, I think this is another battlefield I have never been on before. I don't remember the U.S. Military Asylum or any of that, so this is cool. It's always nice to explore a new battlefield. And these are the men that we're going to have to do this with. He's going to be coming down this main road. Looks like uh, we are defending. There's an objective here and objectives over here, so... That's probably where we want to be. I might leave somebody on this road here, but then take the majority of my force up this direction. And then if he comes down here, we'll come across and hit him. That'll be the plan. All right, he fooled me. He's coming down this road. I was not expecting that at all. So he was going for that objective. The good news is we did have our units starting to get in that direction. So Zollicoffer's division is going to have to get into line real quick. And then behind them, we've got the mighty Special Forces Division under Pickett. Let's bring them up on this side. Oh, hey, hello. Didn't see him coming that way. Boy, he really surprised me with his movement here. Okay, let's send Pillow's Division up. Let's start bringing the cab around. I was not expecting this at all. So we'll put pick it, pick it in right there. Then Zollicoffer is going to come in on this side. Where are you going, Pemberton? He's about to get his perk and there they've made contact all right so I guess here it is so we'll adjust accordingly we're all bunched up in this spot, though. All right, we'll send Zollicoffer over this way, then. You guys should have their perk in a second. Those red and blue uniforms look cool on the battlefield, I'll say that. Very distinct, that's for sure. All 
Where's all the coffer? What are we waiting on here, buddy? Alright. Let's get the 14 pounder James is back here somewhere. I don't know what happened to these guys over here. We can't see them at the moment. I'm going to send Hill up a little further. See if we can't figure out what's going on. Let's get Johnston over here somewhere. Where's Lee? Lee's going with the left flank. Send out some skirmishers. Let them engage for now. The rest of his army is in here somewhere. All right, we're finally getting sorted here. Sharpshooters. Let's move them up just a hair so they can level up that perk by getting in range. Oh, Nelson's going to come at me. Send out skirmishers. Let's get them mounted up. They're going to have to cross down here. I might have to send them in to go deal with this battery. Alright, we're going to push Picket up. Get him. Alright, we're gonna push Gideon Pillow right up into this guy's flank. See what he does about that. charged into me. Interesting. Nelson came forward big time. Oh, Hill. Turn around, buddy. Alright, we drove off that battery. That was good. I'm going to put Zolikoffer into a single line and move him forward into this gap. In the meantime, how are we doing, Pickett? I'd prefer General Pickett if you got a little further behind the line. Let's not get you killed. Yeah, you. Back here, please. This is a problem. Pemberton's under some pretty heavy fire. Discipline. 
got sharpshooters here. I like having a variety of things in the same division. battle right now is a basically a one-on-one -on -one duel between three brigades of mine and three brigades of his. We could probably bring some help up though. Let's see if we can get Preston up here. Oh wait, no. Not no no no. I wanted Hobson. Looking at the, uh, the status, the morale status, especially Pemberton, I'm concerned about. Everybody else, I think, will be okay. Okay, he's bringing up a battery here. That's a problem. But this is going to help. All right, I think he's pulling back. I'm really concerned about Walker with this battery over here. They're going to start hitting AP Hill over here, so we're going to have to bring up infantry support. Alright, do your thing again. Got to go into the woods and try to and it's not real thick woods. Try to take out this battery. Hit him. Yes. Let's get the VMI heavy artillery up. All right, that whole division just broke. So we won that one-on-one -on -one battle. And with it, I think we've won this battle. Oh, there goes Hill. That's not a huge concern, though. Boy, that one turned in an instant. It was pretty even there for a while. And then once this division on his left broke, that was it. All right, hit him, Embry. Let's finish this. Nice. And with that, he retreats. Now the question becomes... Can we march into Washington? Is it going to really be that simple? Okay, 2,700 casualties for me, 4,200 for him. Most of those coming right at the very end. The more important question, of course, now is what are the defenses of Washington? Are there forts? Uh, historically, Washington, D.C., by the middle of the war, was the most fortified city on Earth. There were, I mean several dozen major fortifications surrounding the city. I mean, there was zero chance the Confederacy was going to ride into Washington from the middle of the war on. I will say this, though. That in 1864, uh, General Grant pulled a lot of the, the heavy artillery regiments, which were like 2,000 men each, out of the forts and left Washington more undefended at that point. But... Um, up until then, it wasn't a major concern. I don't see... I mean, he's got Fort Washington with only 63 men. So we may be able to do this. Let's see what happens. All right, Johnston, let's go. Right now we're taking Alexandria, so it's going to take a little time. Getting Robert E. Lee's hometown back. All right, now we're not taking Alexandria anymore. Uh, let's move the Army of Virginia up to deal with Alexandria. 
It's a small force, 7,000 men, but it'll do the job. Washington's going to take a lot more effort, as you can see. And the Army of the Chesapeake may or may not be in a position to hit us again. All right. So that'll have to come for next time, though, because uh, there's another battle brewing. But we won't get into that one today. We'll save that for the next time. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below, and we will see you again soon. Thanks for watching.